Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this video, we're gonna have some extra math fun because we get to solve an algebra word problem. And of course, I know uh, for most of you out there, this is your favorite thing to do, you know, when it comes to like, you know, watching Netflix or doing algebra word problems. I know most of you are gonna say, you know what, I'm going to do algebra word problems. However, that's really not the case. Most people, when they think about word problems, they kind of have this expression, and they're like, word problems, math word problems, that's terrible. Why do we even have to do this stuff? Well, let me just tell you right now, math word problems, okay, and of course we're going to be talking about algebra. This is an algebra word problem. It's nothing more than an application of the math skills that you're learning. So why learn math if you can't solve problems? So when you see an algebra word problem, you know, you kind of should think of it in terms of, well, this is why I'm learning this material to actually put it to work and, you know, solve problems. Now, this um, uh, particular problem that we're going to be uh, looking at is a classic type of uh, problem that you'll see in almost all algebra textbooks or courses. But uh, let me go ahead and read you the problem. It says the sum of two consecutive odd integers is 60. What are the integers? Now, I'm not going to explain any of the terms here because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this all on your own. And if you know how to solve this, go ahead and put your answer uh, into the comment section. I'm going to uh, show you the correct answer in just one second. Then I'm going to fully explain this problem. This is not going to be that difficult. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, um, I'm not going to explain some of these uh, terms here if you're a bit confused. Probably a lot of students may not quite uh, understand this word consecutive. They're like, well, what does that mean? And they may have uh, forgot what an integer is. No big deal, I'll explain this here in a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Again, we're looking for two um, integers, right? Two consecutive odd integers that add up to 60. So what is the answer? Well, the answer is 29 and 31. These are your two consecutive odd integers. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. If that's the case, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus A 100% and multiple stars that could tell your friends and family that today you solved an interesting algebra word problem. They'll be very, very happy and pleased to hear that information indeed. Okay, now if you are like, well, I'm confused because I don't know what this, you know, what these words mean, or you know, you're not quite sure what consecutive and integers means. Well, obviously you're going to have to have an, a really solid understanding of these terms in order to solve this problem. Now, before we get into the actual problem, let me go ahead and just kind of stress to you that you know, knowing having a strong math vocabulary, okay, is very important. Like you know, an integer. What is an integer? What is a rational number? You know, what is a radical? Uh, what is an exponent? You know, all these different uh, terms you need to kind of remember. You just can't look at uh, math in terms of its patterns and be like, well, that's good enough. I know a lot of people are like, well, it's one of these things, you know, like a polynomial. Uh, you might not, you know, uh, remember the actual term to describe something, but you should try to strengthen your math vocabulary. It is uh, very important. But let's go ahead and get into the problem. So uh, again, uh, we have an algebra word problem. Now in general, okay, when you're solving any word problem in mathematics, you want to read the problem at least three times. I'm going to quickly go through uh, what I uh, feel is like a good kind of set of guidelines here. And if you need additional help with word problems, or if you want to practice more algebra word problems, or just you know uh, learn the algebra that you need to solve these word problems, I have additional um, uh, word problems on my YouTube channel. And if you really want to kind of get into all this stuff, check out uh, my math courses. You'll find the links to each of those uh, in the description below as well. So again, you can have more advanced word problems if you're taking pre-calculus versus you know something more basic like uh, like this. That you, you probably find this uh, this particular type of problem like maybe like in a pre-algebra or algebra one course. Okay, but and what you want to do is read the problem at least two or three, at least three times, not two or three times, at least three times to make sure you fully understand what's going on. So that's step one. Step two is you want to kind of model 
this uh, situation. Okay, you can kind of graphically do that, uh, but any kind of creative way so you can kind of visually see what's going on or try to you know kind of see patterns that you need to understand in order to uh, figure out the problem. The third thing is you want to establish a variable. The fourth thing is you want to create an equation, okay, to solve for that particular variable. The variable is going to represent your know, uh, the unknown values that you're trying to solve for, okay. And then you're going to solve the, uh, that particular equation that you set up, and then you're going to answer the question. So I didn't list these things out. I'm just kind of telling you, uh, telling you uh, these guidelines here. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the problem. And before we uh, go any further, let's make sure you understand what an, ent uh, what an integer is and then the, what this word consecutive means. Because if you don't understand these terms, you're not going to be able to do this problem. So integers, okay, in mathematics, Remember, these are part of the real number system, and it's these numbers right here. Okay, so we could start with zero. So we got one, two, three. Now, typically, if it was just one, two, or three, you would just describe these numbers as, uh, you know, these would be what we call the uh, counting numbers, okay, or natural numbers. Then we throw in zero, then we have the whole numbers. And then if you take the positive and negative, the whole numbers, you have the uh, integers. But you can just kind of remember, you got one, two, three, zero, negative one, negative two. These numbers like this are integers. Okay, and of course, they continue on in both directions. Okay, so that's what an integer is. And consecutive, well, the word consecutive in mathematics or anything is just, you basically have uh, one thing right after uh, a number that comes right after uh, um, a previous number, right? So you have a number and then the next number. I guess that's the best way to say it. I'm not going to give you like a formal definition. Sometimes it's just easier to see it. So five and six are consecutive numbers, right? So you got five and then the next number is six. So you would describe uh, these numbers as consecutive. Now, this problem is a little bit different because we're not talking about consecutive numbers. We're talking about consecutive odd integers. So we have to kind of think about this for a second. So let's take a look at um, some examples of consecutive odd integers. So like if we have one, okay, one is an integer. I said it is an integer, and one is odd. So the next number, the next integer is two, but that's even, okay? So that's not going to be good. So here, three, the next number comes after that, is odd, and it's an integer. So consecutive odd integers would be like one and three. Okay, so you've got to really make sure you understand that, all right? Okay, so over here, you can see that if I have one, okay, that's an odd integer, and so uh, the next consecutive odd integer would be three, okay? And you can see this pattern here. So seven's an integer, it's odd, so the next number is eight, it's even, so the next number after that is odd. So like seven and nine would be consecutive odd integers. Now, if you notice here, they're separated uh, uh, like consecutive numbers. All you have to do is add one to get the uh, consecutive integers to get to the next number, right? But to get to the next consecutive odd integer, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to add two. And so it's important that you kind of uh, model, you know, uh, patterns here so you can understand what you need to do. And so what we're going to do now is establish a variable, right? So we kind of hopefully understand um, the pattern here. We're looking for two consecutive odd integers. So if we let our first integer uh, be like x, right? x is some, represents an unknown value. Whatever that is, if x is our first uh, odd integer, then x plus 2 will be our next um, integer, right? Our, next, our consecutive odd integer. So if x is our first odd integer, x plus 2, is the consecutive odd integer, right? And you can see this pattern play out with any set of, um, you know, integers, right? Like 11, 12, 13, these are integers, odd, odd, just, you know, just whatever your integer is, x, add two to it and you get your next uh, odd uh, integer, right? Consecutive odd integer. Okay, so now that you understand the pattern, let's go ahead and formalize this and kind of define variables. So we're gonna go ahead and let x, okay, uh, be equal to the first odd integer. So x plus 2 will be our second odd integer. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, boy, you're really dragging us out, Mr. YouTube Math, man. I get what you, I get what you, you know, what I need to do. You don't need to write all this stuff out. Listen, 
this is the way you know you get better at word prompts. This is a basic word prompt, and you know you need to kind of tell the story of how you're solving it so your teacher or anyone else can understand what's going on. So if you can't you know uh, kind of structure your solutions properly in easy word prompts like this, you're gonna have a tough time with more advanced word prompts. So label things, just follow. Uh, the kind of the guidance I'm giving you. So establish what these variables stand for. So let x equal, just write this down, the first odd integer. So x plus 2 will be the second odd integer. Remember, we're looking for two odd integers. The, uh, so we'll have our first number and our second number. Okay, so now we need to kind of go back up to this part of the problem. The sum of two consecutive odd integers is or is equal to 60. All right, so now we, we're going to go ahead and build an equation. So we have these variables, but in order to solve for these unknown values, we need to set up an equation. So here is our equation. So here is our first odd integer, and this is our second odd, ent or, uh, odd integer right here, right? So we have x uh, and x plus 2. The sum of these two odd integers is 60, all right? Okay, so now that you're satisfied that you got the correct equation, you model the situation. Now we're just kind of off to the races to solve this nice basic linear equation. So I have x plus x plus 2 is equal to 60. So x plus x is 2x plus 2 is equal to 60. Now I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. And you're going to get 2x is equal to 58. So to solve for x, all I need to do is divide the equation both sides, uh, uh, the equation, uh, the both sides of the equation by 2, excuse me. And you get x is equal to 29. Okay, so what does that mean, though? Well, let's go back to, you know, when we established our variables, right? Uh, x was the first odd integer, so our first odd integer is 29. And we just kind of de uh, kind of deduce that the uh, plus 2, okay, when we add 2 to this one, we're going to get to our second one, which is 31. And, of course, we kind of formalize that right here. So x plus 2 is our second odd integer. Our first uh, integer, our first integer is 29. So it's 29 plus 2, that is 31. Okay. So again, you know, pretty, hopefully not too difficult of a prompt to understand. Even if you didn't get it right, you know, if you understand it, you know, that's excellent. And I want to make another kind of point here as well. Now, if you're watching this video, well, obviously you're watching this video. So here you are, hopefully you got a smiley face on and your brain is working and you're like, wow, that was pretty cool. And you're watching, you're watching me do the work, right? You're watching me uh, work and you're watching me solve the problem. And you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. And what you're saying here is, oh, I get this. I get this. I understand. Okay, perfect. But let me just uh, caution you. This is not really... Uh, uh, what you need to do in order for you to learn this stuff, okay? This would be no different than, let's say, you watching someone play uh, basketball, like maybe a professional basketball player shooting baskets and whatnot on TV, okay? By you watching, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're developing the skill. So you got to be very um, careful with this. This is something that a lot of students, including myself, uh, when I was a student, you know, you get kind of, um, you, know, you forget that you yourself have to do the work. Uh, when you're watching your teacher, you're just in the, you know, you're watching a teacher solve problems and you're like, oh, I get this. Oh, I see what they're doing. Da, da, da. And you might even be taking notes. But if you don't actually practice this yourself, it's not going to go into your long term uh, brain housing group up here. OK, so the number one thing you have to do in order to improve your math skills is you actually got to do the problems yourself. OK, so it's OK for you to watch me do the problem. But what I would suggest is that, OK, maybe five or 10 minutes from now, see if you could do this problem all on your own OK, to come up with the same answer. That's how you kind of verify that you're learning this stuff. Right. So just keep that in mind, uh, because I know all of you out there want to improve in mathematics. All right. So this is algebra, basic algebra, pre-algebra, algebra one. So if you need help with um you know, whatever level, I'm going to list uh, in the description my specific math course. You can check those out or see all my math courses at tcmathacademy.com. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.